Welcome to Ellen Kesa, the Real Talk Show, where we have real conversations with real people. I am your beautiful host, Ellen Kesa. In today's episode, we have a very special guest who is a powerhouse in the event industry. She is the CEO and founder of Kimon Events, a company that designed event spaces with Deco in Sierra Leone, and also the CEO and co-owner of the View Hotel Restaurant and Sky Lounge, a premier destination for hospitality and entertainment. If that's not enough, she is also serving as the vice chair and only female of the Oradicals Foundation. Who is she? Find out right after this break. Let's watch the real talk with Eileen TV Show. own daughter of Sierra Leone, Eileen Kistar. Welcome back to Eileen Kistar, the Real Talk Show with me. I have the beautiful Fatsmata S. Davis. Welcome, Mrs. Davis. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Eileen, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Happy birthday. She just turned 40, guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The party was lit. I had fun. I drank a lot. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, you know, I mean, I had a, I had a good time. Thank you. Happy thank birthday you. again. Thanks. Thank you. You know, I mean, you know, this 40th birthday, I know her. She's one of my girls. We always hang out and chill. But then her speech at the 40th birthday just, mm. you know, I had to say, you know, well, you're going to come here and tell your story because it was really inspiring. You know, we did talk about <laughs> how far you don't come out to Usa, you did, yeah. all before 40. I said, it's also party party business. F any for Kanaya. But anyways, I mean, like I was just talking about your, your speech. Um, you know, tell me about you, 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 your journey from back, like your village to where oh, you wow. are right yeah. now. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. um... I was born in 83, okay. of course, in Kono, um, Kweiru town. That was way before the Rebel War. Mm -hmm. um, I started school in Kono. I did my nursery and part of my primary school in Kono. I had to go to Kamakwe at some point. Okay. Um, I spent a year there with my grandmother, okay. and then I came back to Kono. And then this time around, instead of Kweiru, I was in Yengema with my cousin. Okay. That's another story. Mm -hmm. um, so I was there till, I think I was in class four or oh, three going to four, and then I had to go back to Kamakwe when they were able to invade them, um, Kono in 92. Okay. I did my fifth year in Kamakwe, I went to class six, and then that was how I ended up in Freetown. Oh. Um, attended the Christchurch Primary School for a year, and then I went to the FSSG, again because um, of the, the AFRC junta, you know, and all of that. I had to go to Nigeria in 99, okay. after January 6th. So that was where I finished my secondary school um, in Lagos. In between secondary and uni, I got pregnant. I had my, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had my first child at 19. You know, okay. I came back, um, went to Frabi College just to see me. Thankfully, I had a mom who was very supportive. Right. Um, you know, even after my pregnancy, she literally took my child when he was four months old. Okay. So as soon as I had, I was this pregnant, when I bought my form for uni, um, she told me, you care for go college, you know, so I'm not care with you, know, with you all you belay, just water. take the belay, you know, go college and go buy your form. So I went to uni, bought the form. Thankfully, I had him in June. I got admitted in um, October, November. She took him away. You know, I went to uni. That was another four years of my life. I was, it was part of social clubs. I was in politics. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> At Frabi College. And um, I ended up being the vice president of Frabi College Student Union when I was in my final year. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. And um, I left in 2006. <laughs> and um, I went um, straight to Access Bank. So we were, first of, we were part of the first cohorts. For, for Access Bank? Yes. So imagine that. You, so you, you were a tin mom, I, I literally didn't stop. So it was, it was happening. It was just, Everything and, was and just And that's the happening. thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people now, if they get pregnant at a certain age, I mean, you had support from your mom. Yeah. So it's different. Because somebody would say, hey, we're not okay, mama, being daddy. Mm. You know what I mean? That was another thing. Is more like you didn't stop. No. You kept moving. Yeah. You didn't care what nobody was going to say. You know? I mean, also they had day is, is, I wouldn't say it's a taboo, but you know, if you're young, you're born you born know, picking, everybody's going to be looking at you. Looking but with you, you, you're like, uh-uh, I'm, I'm going to go. You, and then you, you can imagine. College. My, my mom comes from this Paramount Chief family. I was the youngest of four kids. None of my elder siblings came back home with a child. <laughs> I did. You know, all of that pressure was on her. But you, she sat me down. You know, when she heard that I was pregnant, she called me. Okay. Then I was in Lagos. She called me over the phone. And she was like, what is it that I'm hearing? Do you want to stay in Nigeria or do you want to come back? But then I thought that I needed the support pillar. So okay. I said, I'm coming back home. Okay. So when I came back, she sat with me and she said, are you really pregnant? And I said, yes. And she said, what do you want to do with it? I told her, you know, I was quite scared. <laughs> so I didn't want it to sound obvious that I wanted a child. Right. But I, I, I wanted to own up 
you know, for my mistakes. Right. I wouldn't call him that mistake because I look at him now and, and I'm like, very damn, proud. it's you know, a good thing I kept People it. think he's my younger brother. Okay. But she sat me and she asked and I told her, yes, I want to have this child. So behind my back, what she did was she went to the doctor and told the doctor, tell her if you pull this belly, they died. <laughs> So, so I went to the hospital and I went to the gynecologist and he said to me, oh, do you conditioned? Do you right now? If you sick, touch this bikini, you go die. So it was all this thing of you're going to have this child. I'm going to be there for you as for a mother. You, and then you're going you know, to school. And you're still going back to school. Okay. And, and, and that was when she told me a story about my aunt who had only two kids. So, so those two kids, she had one when she was in secondary school. Okay. And then she had another when she was in uni. And those are the only two kids that she's got. Right. So she said to me, if she had taken, you know, so, she's gotten rid of those kids because of education, it, yeah. she would have ended up childless now. Right. So right. I, I went through that. I had my child. Um, my mother, God bless her soul, you know, may she continue to rest in peace. Oh, nice. She is the best, you know. Okay. She was and still is the best. Um, yeah. She was a single parent in Kono. Um, she and my dad got divorced when I was still a child. Oh, not rich. Wow. <laughs> I was quite young. So I was running in between two homes, running to my father to get things, and then my mom was there. But when we, even before we lost our dad, she was that woman who would do... She was like the go-getter, because I heard the, the story about she had her. To, you know, as mm -hmm. far as she's concerned, she didn't have much, but her kids had to get the best. You know, oh. as, as average as we were, if new clothes come on a corner for picking our first day around, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things. She would go to coin Dubai, you know, goods to come and sell like, and slippers then send away them different can call us slippers and go come on she will buy them and make sure mm -hmm. that the kids have them so yeah. she made sure that she gave us the best even when she did not have enough okay. so we learned from her even when so we that's came why you back, guys are like that, that's why we're like you this. and your sisters yeah, you know what i mean like, all, we're, we're not used to being handed free gifts okay. we're used to going out for i, I mean that's good because at the end of the day like i said i heard the story and i was like yeah you know so all we should do now it came from her yeah. In other words, so you had to just do it, which is awesome. I know you mentioned I'm a student union vice, you know, president of student union, but at the same time, you were also like Seraph. What is that? Like the Sarah Max and stuff like that? She, I mean, this girl, you don't even understand, you know. Anytime with the commercial, Seraph, Seraph, you know, Olympic kid, I'm like, it's not Seraph. I mean, I didn't go to college here. I'm like, it's not Seraph. And then, I mean. So in year one, I joined the Sarah Max Club. Yeah, and I sailed through. In my second year, I was the Silk, which is the sector. Okay. I was also the siren social secretary. So we had all these names formed. So Sierra Max itself came from it's it's came from the word seraphic. Oh. So you know, like some order of angels and all. And I ended up being the seraph of the club, which is the president of the club while I was okay. in final year. So I was juggling between the seraph and the vice president at the same time. And Are you serious? Yeah. And you still were able to do it. I and people, you know, like one of the speeches was like, you're still like the best ever since then. And I, I, I put my, my money where my mouth is. And for me, when I'm doing something, I do it all the way. Yeah. So I'm either doing it or I'm not doing it. And I went to Sierra Max. I enjoyed my years in uni. Sierra mm -hmm. Max gave me the best years in uni. And I thought, um, young girls coming now should be able to enjoy what we enjoyed. Okay. You know. Yeah. So what did you study? What did you get your degree Economics. in? Economics. Yeah. Economics, no, yeah, this <laughs> businessman. Money. <laughs> the money side. Those girls don't joke with her money, for real. So it, it makes sense. I mean, like you said, you started with access right before you became the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to talk about that one. Um, but the other thing, um, I can pull in with Snado. You know, she was a video vixen, right? Ooh, now you're going to think now. <laughs> Elizabeth, one, Elizabeth, two. That's her right there. <laughs> that, you know, she doesn't like to talk about it because she was like way back. Way the back. first time I put it together, I was like, it not be you. It's like, yeah. <laughs> That's her. So imagine all of those things you were still, I mean, in that entertainment. How did you end up in the video before going to break? I mean, how did you end up in Emerson's video? Right. Um, Emerson and I went to primary school together. We went to okay. Christchurch together. I was always um, in the drama group. So I was a, quite a shy person growing up. So the only thing that really gave me confidence was being on stage okay. and talking. That's the only time that you will hear me. So right from my Kono days, mm -hmm. again, I was intelligent. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I, I found myself on stage most times when we had school plays or, you know, there was probably a speech to be read mm -hmm. by one of the pupils. I was always there. So when I came to Christ Church, I was part of the drama group. Okay. And Emerson was as well. We then called him Amindu. So for me, I still call him Abidu. <laughs> so we, we were in school together. Most of the time, you know, like, we would get in contact there. Go make me go be, I mean, big and bad, so I go play the mama role, Emma single play the papa role, <laughs> you know, and all of So that's how we came together. So when he went into music, 
And um, he reached out when he wanted to do that video. Then I was in uni. He reached out and he said, I want to do this video. You know, you know the songs are there. Right. But I want somebody who can actually play the part. And I think you can. And for me, it's like, you know, helping a brother. Why not? Uh, why not? Of course. You know? Elizabeth. Well, but anyway, <laughs> don't go anywhere because I'll be right back after this commercial break. Small businesses are not small. They keep you pumped. They keep you learning. They keep you healthy. They keep you stylish. They keep you fed. Happy birthday to you. They keep you smiling. We can do all of this because they keep us moving. At UBA, we keep your small business moving because your business is big business. Ready to get moving? Welcome back to Ellen Kiss to the Real Talk Show. With me, I have Mrs. Fatmata S. Davis in the building. We're talking about, of course, her journey. You know, I mean, she's a trailblazer. When you talk about famous as a double because she's one of them. Um, and then, of course, she has Cayman Events. She's the CEO of Cayman Events. We'll talk about the view later, as I said in the intro. But Cayman Events, that's yes. another thing. Another you thing. know, you being this, you know, actress and then politics. You don't do so many things. And then, bam, FA is doing deco. And the deco is, is top notch, you know what I mean? Like to the point where you're international. How did that passion come about to you getting there and how did it feel? Right, um, so K1 came about in 2015. We started in 2015, but I actually started thinking about it in 2014 when during the um, Ebola days. Okay. So I traveled with my kids, we went to the UK and my youngest was about two then, but he was quite the adventurer. Um, I'm, I remember there was a day I took them out to a fun fair park and he was going up on bouncing castles, you know, on slides. He was not scared at all. Okay. But then I stood and I was looking at him because for me, it's always been, I have to be in Sierra I never believe what's up over scene, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so all, all this while that I was there, I was just thinking to myself, Ebola had better finished because I want to go back home. Right. But the one thing that I was thinking about was they come here on holidays, they have all of this and then they go back. To Sierra Leone and there's nothing like this for them to go back to exactly you know so I, I sat there and I told my husband you know some things like this are lacking in Sierra Leone right and he said yeah so what do you want to do I said well I'm thinking going into kids you know sort of events and he said okay so what do we do we went online we looked for bouncy castles you know okay. uh, yeah slides pools inflatable pools and all of that and I realized that all of them were available in China so I went to China I ended up in China <laughs> To buy these things i had my savings in you know, my piggy bank and mm -hmm. i i thought let me clear up you know mm -hmm. all of this it was the money was in the bank they were just collecting interest me i'm not going to make nothing out of mine for me <laughs> well i'm going to get profits past something not worth me one. Ah, we know we know <laughs> yeah so, so i took the money went to china and um i bought the, the toys for kids but then while i was going around i saw chairs you know and tables i thought if i'm having something for kids the parents mm -hmm. are coming you want to entertain the parents as well and they will need Places to Precious sit and then you will need tables, you know, and all mm -hmm. of that. And somewhere, somehow, I saw a beautiful bridal chair in one of the stores. Oh. And for me, the one thing that I've struggled with in Sierra Leone, I mean, I give it to those who started before I came in. It was class. It was standard. Right. You know, you'll go to an event, you'll find that we're all sitting on the same table. Your crockery is different from what I'm having. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't sink. And coming from where I'm coming from in Nigeria, I've been to events and I see how people... You see the levels, you know, how, how, how no much, matter what, yeah, how far you know, the levels. You know, so that's how I ended up buying bridal tables and chairs and all of that. So I came and I started with the kids once. So I was doing kids and I was doing weddings as well. My first term, um, in fact, my first term... Um, business that I had was for a christening. So I was telling okay. the mom the other day, you picking at me first client, I'm making for being married. You know, so we're joking about it. But then I had him and then I, I did a flyer that I put on Facebook. Somebody looked at it and trusted me with her wedding. Okay. But that, the day for that wedding, I had a carnival at the FSSG. Look, I'm, I'm a fusion. So get so many, so many different things. <laughs> I'm a fusion. So I was there. I, I drove from FSSG to Tokyo. I actually slept in my car because I didn't, I didn't book a room. Whoa. So I slept in the car from the car by six who were at the beach trying to set up. 
because I was thinking of that was my first event, no visa. I had no idea. I didn't go to any school to study. Nothing. There was nothing. Yes. Oh, wow. So we went out and we did this, and the, the bride was quite pleased. You know, she came back. She was very happy. You know, we took pictures. I took those pictures. So the one thing that turned came around. I took those pictures. I remember feedback you know sometimes we get feedback and people yeah. take it wrongly mm -hmm. but there was a lady that i thought i wouldn't i mean i don't mention her but i keep telling people that if came on is where came on is today it's because, it's of, because of her so what did she say so i showed her you know you don't go make now you the brag see how they decorate you decorate she say Aline, hey, decoration they do now look me, look me. <laughs> she looked at it the pictures were good but it was the normal serenian attitude hey you should say go survive for this industry people they don't can have before you and we don't already create and cry and tell you know all of that I went home that night, I didn't sleep. I'm thinking, this is so, all my savings. And then you can't tell me, say, you And you're telling survive. me I won't succeed. So, and they push so, it for you. Yeah, yeah so for, for me, the first thing, I, that I was worried. You know, I was thinking, what was I thinking? Waiting, catch me up. I don't put this money to something else. I was thinking, opening a kid's shop. Why not when you go buy clothes and can open this shop? You know, I, I felt quite deflated. And, you know, I was, I was depressed that night. Pulling down syndrome. You know, <laughs> yeah. But then, the next morning, I woke up. So, look, I was in my room. I can talk to myself. I I sat in front of the mirror. And I was telling myself, Effie, what's in your problem? You know, mm -hmm. I'm almost people married in a salon every year. And I said to myself, a lot. I mean, I asked, I mean, answer now. <laughs> that was how much she pushed me. <laughs> and then I said a lot. And I said, almost people married in December. And I said, well, hundreds, you know, because every day you work, I will see people almost kind of, you know. But mm -hmm. then I asked myself again, can you do all of those weddings if you want to focus on weddings? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I can't do all the weddings. Do you still want to do weddings? And I said, yes. Which weddings do you want time. to do? I said, I want to do the weddings. So it's not just any wedding. I want, you know, for wedding, me to survive like now. Level up Level weddings. up. You know, for me to survive, I need to move beyond what she has said to me. Okay. So I called my husband again and I said to him, I need to go back to China. <laughs> and he said, the money put on even pull out. You can't go back to China. Like, what's wrong with you? I said, you? no, I need to go. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, okay, fine. I said, trust me with this. If you fail, you fail, but just give me this. So he said, okay, fine. And then I went. You know, I went there and I made sure that I bought things that were not in Sierra Leone. Because that's the other thing, right? It's like you said, they're not in Sierra Leone. And most importantly, you don't repeat your decors. No. You don't. That's the part I don't get. Like, you see one picture, it's on this level. The other picture is another level. Like, sure. you do so many weddings and they're all just so different. Sure. Yeah. That's How are you able to just think and say, okay, I'm doing this for a little key store or something, and then, bam, this is what I want. I know the brides, they normally want what they want. Mm -hmm. However, but just you at the forefront, because every comment I've seen with every decor is more like, you brought my vision to life. Mm -hmm. So you want to tell me with every wedding or party, you actually fly out and go get products to bring to Sierra Leone? No. Okay. So I, I sort of buy yearly or twice yearly. Okay. Um... So with every wedding, what I do is I try to understand what, you know, the couple mm -hmm. wants. It's what the bride wants first, and then I see. Most times you have to advise them on what, what you, you know, think what is works right. for them. Right. Because when people will come to you and they will tell you, I want 15 different colors. You know, I want, yeah. I, yes, I get purple, I'm a color, I get this and all of that. But, but your, your job as a decorator or planner is to actually guide, you know, the bride as to what is good, what will work out for them and all of that. So I do that. And again, I hate repeating myself. So when people come to me and they go, oh, that's what you've been doing for this person now. And I, I can't be doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So in as much as I'll give you what you want, the plan for me is for every wedding or every event that I do, it has to improve. I've got to improve. I cannot right. go lower. So, you know, it comes with a lot of pressure. I, I do some events myself and I'm, I, I look at them and I'm thinking, Papa God, how I will beat this after, you know, at this yeah. particular one. And unfortunately, we've got such few venues in Sierra Leone. Like right. if you know they walk na Bintu Mani, you they walk na Country Lodge, you they walk na View Now, and then you they walk na Bank of... It's, it's just the same. It's just the same, but I see so, how you transform yeah. all of these places. And you going to Liberia and doing mm. Decker for the President. For me, that was really good. It shows that Sierra Leone, you know, I mean, we're on a level. I mean, yeah. because, you know, that means there's nobody there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. your work took you there. Took there. How did that feel before we're going to break? Like doing Decker for, you know, not necessarily in prison, but like somebody else. Like for me, I'll be like, hey, yeah, international. <laughs> Net networking. That's, that's where right. networking comes in. Um, mm -hmm. So I got that job through a Ghanaian um, friend of mine whom I met again in the event industry. So I mm -hmm. met her um, in the event industry. And so when that came up, she said, I know somebody in Sierra Leone who can pull this off. 
she reached out to me. There's this thing coming up in Liberia, and um, this is what they want to pull off. Can you come to Monrovia? I'm like, of course I can come. Why not? Mm -hmm. So um, we, of course, negotiated, agreed, and I, I took my staff. And I felt so proud that for the first time, most of them went outside of Sierra Leone. Okay. You know, those who had passports had their passports. Imagine stabbed, that. You know, it was yes. the first time they actually you know, live in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. that, that is came on for you. And we got to Liberia. We were at the presidential mansion. Wow. Yes. Um, we did the decor. It was top notch. And I felt so good. You know, people walked out and it looks like a different space completely. And everybody was asking, who did this? Is this a Nigerian? Did they fly a Nigerian? Yeah, they just assumed it's Nigerian. You know, and all of that. And then they said, no, the person came from Sierra Leone. You know, so I, 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 I felt proud flying the Sierra Leone the flag. flag. And I saw a comment that somebody forwarded to me that somebody wrote on Facebook. The person that did the decor for the Bicentennial celebrations did a wonderful job. This is amazing. And this is a Liberian writing. Okay. And a Liberian then who knew me forwarded that, forwarded that to you. me. So it, it shows you it know, shows a lot. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you felt good. And felt it was quite. A, we were proud of you because I was sitting there, yeah, that's my girl, that's my you. friend. But anyways, don't go anywhere because <laughs> I'll be right back after this commercial break. For a new me vehicle insurance and driver's license. <sighs> oh no, Tim don't go safe. And this agent self not a picking call. How I go do now? Me insurance self don't expire. You want to say you know your yet but smart pay? Smart pay? Smart pay don't come for me can easy for me and you. No need for left your office again or O's for go to renewal or even call agent. You can simply go online and visit their website on www.smartinsuresl.com for renew insurance or www.slisaonline.gov.sl for renew license. All you need for doing is for complete the online form, submit them, and then pay with SmartPay. SmartPay don't make life easy for we salon people. Eh? We just this make cash card. I use them for pay bills in a restaurant, supermarket, and I can even use them for buy tickets for events, pay university fee. You know, don't do. I don't even use them for pay extra, prepaid and postpaid. And I don't even use the same card for shop online with no cause to complain. Because you can put as much money as you want inside this card. Not forget about the gifts that we can use for gift person. In fact, that's me right now. I know they accept no gift if you know they're in the form of smart pay gift card. Because I can use our USA ones and how I want to use them. Any mammy now you get. Yeah? Before I forget, on our way to sports betting. Smart pay don't make an easy for una for place to bet and collect to winning. Do you allow God one one them online? You don't get your smart pay? Go cashless with smart pay. I am still here. Welcome back to Ellen Kiss to the World Talk Show. If you just walked in, I have Mrs. Fatima Davis, the CEO of Cayman Events and of course the CEO of The View Hotel Restaurant and Sky Lounge. That's another thing that she's doing. But anyways, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, of course, we're very proud of you with everything. We'll talk about Cayman and how you got into that. Mm -hmm. And then um, now we're going to talk about The View a little bit. But Competition, how do you deal with competition in Sierra Leone? Like, you said something about that girl or whoever made that comment about, you company don't count, you know, but whatever it is. Like, how are you able to deal with it? Because I notice, you know, we have few mm -hmm. from overseas, they come here, yeah. you know, and the ones here um, are, yeah, are here. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you know, no, no, no pressure no to pressure, those, yeah. but with you, you just try to keep it on that level. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with, you know, the others that are really trying to match up or even do better than you? If there's any. I, I think if Kimon is where Kimon is right now, it's because of them. You okay. know, for me, I, I believe in competition. There has to be competition. Okay. You know, competition pushes me. So mm -hmm. w w when I do certain things and then I, I make no mistake, I look at pictures, okay? I look at what other people do and I'm Dang. thinking, ah, this person don't look the candy I me, mean, I need for push. <laughs> so so I think it's good that there's competition there. Okay. The only thing that I think I believe that we can work on in Sierra Leone is collaboration. Okay. You know, for me, competition for as long as it's healthy, it's fine. Okay. You know, it's when it's not healthy, that's where the problem is. But if it's healthy, come on. I, like I said, I can't do everything. So, but what is this thing about you guys not really supporting each other? 
you know, because I, I heard yeah, that. Yeah. So you know, I thing, mean, yeah. yeah, you guys don't yeah. support each other. You will have something or somebody else will have something. But like, oh, you know, I mean, I want this. And they just don't do it because it's more like, oh, if you need this, that person for don't cancel me, something like that. Yeah. But on your industry, like, there's no form of no, we collaboration need, support. We need, we need Why, though? We, we don't collaborate. So, so now, thankfully, we're trying to build that because um, okay. a couple of weeks back, we had the masterclass that we did with them. Um, MNE from IPC events in Nigeria. Okay. And what I've tried to do is all of those who attended mm -hmm. the masterclass, I've tried to see how we can work together. For example, I even have an event coming up that I can do that. I've hired one of those people okay. to go do it and then I'll of course give out any support that I can. But uh, you know, but in Sierra Leone, we just suffer with them things then because because people don't believe in competition. Mm -hmm. People feel say okay because Elin don't come, Elin they do this talk show, maybe they do talk show, Elin one can pull me in a business. The pool is that big. Right. You know, like we all get for understanding. I believe in one thing. My clients are different from yours. People who come to me will not go to somebody else. People mm -hmm. who go to that person will not come to me. But at the same time, if we can work together, you know, mm -hmm. we, we can only call ourselves an industry when we work together. Right. We can't we not go say we get event industry, we the event industry know they work together. Right. You know, like for example, you say entertainment industry, you have different people coming together to do it. So now I'm trying to collaborate with other vendors, you okay. know, whether it's people that are doing, because the event industry is quite large. People built in just it's beyond the decoration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's people that do cakes, it's photography. Like it's, it's, a, know, it's, it's a whole it's, bunch. And well, I mean, I, I, you know, I wish you all just really collaborate, but it's just sad because, so say you want to do events, but then you get something, and then, uh, you know, we're going to need that from somebody else. The minute they mention this person, ah, it's like, oh, no, no, I know they do. I know they, you know, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. You guys need to, you know, get it together. I mean, we're trying to move and everything else. Yeah. You know, you go send out some of the challenges in the in that industry. Yeah, well, because you know kind of industry, but you go feel some of the challenges. Those are some of the challenges, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I heard you're very pricey as well. Like you I mean, I know you do top notch, but you like thousand thousand dollar. Right yeah. time, I guess somebody wanna book you the freight force. Yeah, no freight. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this is the challenge that we, we can get on Senekin. Okay. People go online and things are not cheap these days. And okay. For me, like I said, most of the things that I do, and I don't do things alone, which I think is why other people are struggling. I don't believe for it's all the money. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I have events, for example, I have a florist that I call that I sit down to do my flowers. Mm -hmm. I don't have to make flowers, so that's not my job. So I need to go fetch to make flowers, so I get for pay that person. Mm -hmm. I have got somebody who does my printings for me. I pay the person for the printing. You know, so, so it's hiring all of those people, believing in your strength, knowing where your strength is. And yeah. then hiring people and paying them to do what they're supposed to do. Whereas with mm -hmm. other people, they believe, say, oh, why well, for good people for make flour? Why well, for can't people sing for iron for me? Why well, for pay? I, mm -hmm. I don't do my laundry. I have got a laundry company that does my that laundry, does. you know. So, so all that just to add to the All that they add to the cost. But, but apart from all of that, people go online. So this is a problem. If the other that I was telling the clients, you go online, you look for a wedding, a Lebanese or Nigerian wedding, where they spend fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars per for do. And they bring one can pay me five thousand for do. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Why? If you want me to pull that off, you've got to be able to pay me enough. For me to go in what is managing yes. and give some and, and the stuff. things that we use, like I said, I decided to bring things in that are not readily available. And those things are quite costly. You know, we all go to China, they go buy. But I know where I buy my things in China. I buy where the European people buy, the European decorators buy from. Yeah. So when I want to buy, first of all, I look at the company. I look who you're supplying. I look who your clients are. Those are the people. I don't buy to people who supply necessarily African markets. Okay. Yeah. So you just take yours in a whole different level. A whole so different definitely. level. We didn't yeah. make a deal, you know what I mean? But before we go, um, um, you know, on the last break and almost at the end of the show, mm -hmm. the view. The that's view. another thing where you're doing that as well. Yeah. You know, this hotel, this restaurant, this car lounge. How did that even come about? Like, you did not just stop there. It's more like, okay, I need for do dandy back. Yes. I need for do dandy back. You know, so you're, of course, the CEO of, of the View mm -hmm. Hotel. How did that come right just, you know, to round that up? I, we I, I believe in bringing back. Um, so another thing that probably you may know is I like traveling. Okay. When, when Salon can don't do me one career, I can get for go force. <laughs> <laughs> I can go for you know, like one kind one or two weeks, go recharge me back and then come back. But then I went to Ghana. My kids are there, actually, they're schooling there. So I went there and um, I went to the Sky Bar. They've got a Sky Bar 25 okay. in Accra. And I sat there and I was looking at you know, the streets of Ghana are busy and everything bubbly. It was a bri brilliant view. And I said to myself, ah, if we can get this kind of in a salon, you know, it go really nice. Yeah. Some way, somehow, um, the advert for the, you know, City Council, city council okay. came up and um, my business partner, Gladys, was like, oh, this thing don't come up. And, you know, you'd be always on the talk, say you want for going to so then kind of thing there. Why don't we go for it? I said, let's go for it. You know, and because Kemon has been there and Kemon has been, you know, in existence since 2015, so came on some way. So Kemon is a parent It's company. a parent company okay, for the for view, yes. View. Okay. Yeah. So it, it was some sort of a process, you know, we've been getting to go through um, bidding, we do presentation. It was, a lot of people went for it, people who had the experience. I guess we all know one day waiting at <laughs> restaurants. And, you know, the bigger hotels, 
I, would, I don't want to name them, but bigger hotels we know, in Seville, we know, we you know. know. Yeah, they all went. <laughs> but somewhere, somehow, we did a presentation, and the committee saw how, commit, how committed we were, how much we wanted it, you know, mm. and, and, and they looked at the presentation and they thought, I think these people can actually bring the difference to the space that we want. So we were given the view. Mm -hmm. It was then the city council, but then we had a lot of brainstorming. We had somebody who was a creative person who worked with us through the process. And all through that period, we were trying to look for a name, waiting for call this place. We're not even getting name for name the for business, him. you know. But during the conversation, now in somebody say, the view now is just fine, you know, and I was like, and that's just the name. I'm like, that's the name. That's the name we're using. So that's how we ended up with the view. And we've got the three floors in Freetown City Council. Okay. How's, um, how's it going? I mean, it's, the it's, fact that it's in town, a lot of people still... It, you know, some nobody, some don't. Yeah, some but don't. how is it going there? It's first Se business Second year running, I think we're, we're getting to what we wanted to achieve. Okay. Because I can tell places we'll be small. We uncool them in the golden heart of gold downtown. You know, it was everywhere you go, all over the world. Life happens downtown. Downtown. In Sierra Leone, it's different. Life, they happen. Not so we're not bring life. So we're know, trying downtown. to bring life back. <laughs> okay. You know, people like for understand back. So when you walk down, it's not about running. When I, when I go to other places, I, I look for accommodation or hotels downtown because that day I want for there. I want for those side activities. Side activity, yeah. So that's what we're trying to bring back to um, free time. And I think so far we're now in the second year. Okay. We, we're beginning to get it. You know, it, it won't happen overnight, but I think we'll get right. there. All right. Well. Trailblazer, the view, make sure you check it out. You know, it didn't have the FCC building. Yes. Of course, it's not just, you know, the lounge. Of course, you get the lounge, you get the hotel, and then you get the restaurant. The restaurant. So it's like different things. So yeah. if you don't want to go to the hotel, you can chill out the lounge. If you just want to eat, you can check out the restaurant, the view. I mean, it's, it's you know, females. We got to support Sierra Leoneans. Yes. Like she said, it was a lot. A lot of people went for it. But then, you know, you guys were both lucky. Lucky. Two beautiful ladies, and they got it, and they're doing the damn thing. Thank don't you. get anywhere, because I'll be right back after this. Hi, I am Leo, a super geek who's obsessed with artificial intelligence. I'm sure you're wondering how I got here. Hi, Tony. It's been hard trying to find a quick way to send the cash across to you. The bank is quite far from where I stay. Girl, I'm trying to call that pop-up shop I saw on IG. I need them shoes for a party this weekend. Wait a minute. I can solve all these problems. All I have to do is get back to my geek zone and get cracking. That's how I created this great virtual solution. Chat with me on Facebook Messenger and experience a whole new world of banking solutions without going to the bank. Make transfers, buy airtime, <laughs> get account statements and more. After all, going to the bank is boring. Like, I can't drink this delicious coffee and fill a teller at the same time. Get it? I am almost at the end of the show. Welcome back to Ellen Kiss of the World Talk Show. If you just walked in, I have Mrs. Fatmata Davis in the building, the CEO of Cayman Events and, you know, in the view, of course, mm -hmm. and the only female, imagine, of Radicals Foundation, and I know the vice chair back as well. <laughs> Imagine, and, you know, if you miss this episode that big, go on YouTube and subscribe and watch and make you see Usai begin to Usai day yeah. and she just turned 40. Imagine that. She's doing a lot. And of course, she's here to inspire a lot of people. You know, she was a teen mom, but look at her. She didn't give up. Yes, yeah, she did have support. I understand that. But the whole point is you can do it too. Welcome back, Mrs. Davis. Thank Welcome. you, Eileen. Thank you. So now this odd, odd article comes back. I don't understand. Yeah. How are you not the only female? <laughs> I mean, I know our radicals is big, big. Like I say, me no, me no go up now. So most of mm. the clubs are this and that. Now, now I don't move cancer alone for the past, you know, 14 years. I don't begin to say this day, this day. Yeah. And only for me for find out. Because I remember when I saw it, and I was like, our radicals. And then, I mean, I'm on. Nah, man, nah, man, nah, man, did it. You know, and then, but the fact that he was actually glad to say, oh, no, not the only woman. I'm like, huh? How did that come about? Okay. So, um, of course, Fabric College, 0206 to 06, I left Rabbi College. Or Radicals um, is, of course, an all-male club. Right. Um, but I was a member of the black family. That, that was how I ended up being the vice president of Rabbi College um, Student okay. Union. Because um, when we won that year, I was the vice. But then I had always been this committed person to the Radicals Club. You know, they say, what they call it, they say, Ora Komotsu, now we this, we get 14 up and did it. You know, oh, I keep, no, no, I keep, no, yeah, no, I keep, you know, no, no, <laughs> but I keep telling people that um, if, if Ora had a female wing, I would have been a member okay. of that wing. So I think they felt that and they saw that. So when the Radicals Foundation came up, they wanted people who You're have got aura at done. heart. Oh. You know, and they thought, let's try and bring women in. And my name came up, you know. So um, that's how I ended up in the 
Radicals Foundation. I'm the vice chair. Okay. Of the so are they going to bring any other females, or is it just you for right now? They yeah, just really yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, we've got um, a few others that we've added on actually now that are part of the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, I mean, with everything that I mentioned that she's doing, you know, how are you able to, to have fun in between all of this? You're a mom of three kids, a wife, entrepreneur running two big businesses. I mean, they all just kind of just everything crowded up. You know, how are you able to at least find that time for FA, for Fatmata? I, I, I struggle with that, but I try. Okay. <laughs> so so there, there are times when I think I have worked too hard that I need to get, you know, my me time and all. Okay. Um, I travel. So that's what I do for fun. Okay. I, I, I believe that I enjoy myself better when I'm outside of Sierra Leone because for as long as I'm in Freetown, walk again for call me some way, somehow. You know, mm -hmm. it's not to the view, like you've said, if it's not the view, it's, it's came on, you know, it's family. So most times when I want to just um, recharge my batteries or relax, I travel. But aside from that, I, I enjoy music. Okay. You know, so the Sky Lounge is my sanctuary. She's so. a dancer as well. I mean, dance part. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. The, the rooftop, you know, that that's my sanctuary. So when I can know yagba yagba all day, they look forward to that kind of six o'clock with the sand don't go down, sit down up, you know, sip a few glasses and do my hookah. <laughs> okay. You know, like you said, that the, the best job um, we do do it to get paid for, like, why would you really didn't enjoy it? Like yeah. we say, sipping hookah, drinking drink, you know, still clocking and making money. At the same time, they chill. That we can go join and they go all the back. watch the bar, they see that they collect the money correctly. Yes, yeah, you know? not the money side, you know, it's not the economics, but what, what you expect, you know, you see what I mean? Yeah. But definitely that, that has to be a, a plus because the money has to make sense for it. Mm -hmm. And with Kim money, we don't talk about earlier, say, you know, it depends on what you want, but not that expensive. But mm -hmm. if you want to live on that level, you got to come correct. Right, that's it. You know, because December 9th season and she does so many things. So it's not just weddings, you do birthday parties birthday as well. Parties, yes. You know, I mean, I'm going to have you watch some of her pictures, you know, while, you know, you see it. Her birthday was like, you know, but it's not if you said for the, me, we're not so even that kind posting this, if I'm like, it's, it's a lot, but yeah. I think I can try it because it, it was just different. So for yeah. me, it, you know, you're really doing well. Thank you're doing you. good. Thank you. Um, the creative part of it is just, Top notch and just Thank dope. You. you know, but you know, I know you mentioned your mom mm -hmm. um, and everything else, but I want to ask who's your role model? You know, <sighs> okay, apart from my mom, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> come y'all know. I think everybody that knows will say it's your mom. I pass from your mom, I mean, um, Oprah, okay. Oprah. See, yeah. why make she's my tweeny <laughs> Oprah is the only person I really look up to. That's who I want to be. Like, She's okay. been through, you know, yeah. all what she's been through, and look at where she is right now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, and then she's a go-getter and it. everything else. So, what's next for 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 FA? You know, what's the next big thing for you? Are you? I mean, are we gonna see here and then? Bam! If it don't go pink club, or if it don't go, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the next big thing for FA? FA will open something. Yes, I'm, it might not be a club, but definitely yes. Um, I I enjoy what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. but I'm always up for adventure. You know, mm -hmm. so. If there's any way that I think I can create change okay. and make something out of it, then yes. Well, let, let me look. I, I wouldn't say if they can do this, but yeah, it, it, there's no stopping me right now. I, I, my target is retiring at 50, so I, I need to work hard to make so sure yeah, that I retire more years, at 50. More years. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, if somebody is out there right now inspired by your story or wants to do, you know, something or, you know, of course, everybody's trying to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. A lot of people, like you mentioned earlier, they see you doing something, they feel like it's easy. They don't know. Yeah. You know, they don't know the story, of course, you know, and everything else. Mm -hmm. But what would you say to, to a young girl um, who's a teen mom, mm -hmm. you know, trying to do something, but maybe, you know, Zilong broke, maybe provoking for till you, you go, you, you go born when you're young and things like that. And what would you say to young people that have passion for something and basically just like that lady wanted to do to you to say, you're not going to survive. What would you say to, to them? Okay. So, so to the teen mom first, last year this in Creole. Mm -hmm. um, from me own story and waiting and learn, believe in yourself. You, you know, we all make mistakes, but let le, not allow your mistake for bring you or hold you back. So if you don't get belly, well, you know, so you're not being planned for getting belly, it happens. I'm not saying go out there and get, you know, get pregnant. But if at all you end up for get belly, believe in yourself and no say that picking not a course to you. And to the families, because it's this is not just on to the Pekin, but the families, you know, the mama, the, the papa, the sister, them, uncle and family will mm -hmm. get around we. Make we no say no to course. Okay. You know, let we try for be a support system right. to that particular person. Mm -hmm. Continue with what you want for do. 
try and push and further your education. I can always say to people, if, I'm not, if I've been decided when I've been going to get Sabe lady, mm -hmm. after don't, you know, drop out of school, can't see don't come, God, me picking and, for, and forget about my dreams. And I mean, I may not necessarily have done waiting, I've been one for do at that point. Mm -hmm. I had plans to my life, oh, I go down school this year, I go do it, I go do it. But things happen along the way. Right. Understand, say, things and they happen when well, they're not supposed to hold you back. If anything, let them be a stepping stone. Okay. Make them push you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Be waiting you want for be. Learn your book. Be an inspiration. And also try and stand up. Because for me, the one that really pushed me was, I look and say, I don't get spelled. I don't bond this speaking. Mm -hmm. Me, I know they can men and for me. And the only way I go for men this speaking, I for like empower myself. And okay. that was education for me. So mm -hmm. like, go, go learn my book. So even for me, I want, I've been going to do internship. And it's how they say, what could they pets? Would they go, go do them? Half, half, survey, so collect mm -hmm. money and men we pick in. But then I know we want for like, look myself so I don't can't get this better. I just sit down now and left myself so. So believe in yourself. Let nothing will kill your dreams them. Mm -hmm. If you mistake and get better on the way, take them as a lesson and move forward with your life. Okay. And you know, make, tell you picking that story to my alone. I was sitting in the joke with them. Okay. That's not for the I will get better. Now for the one that we want for coming to a business or do whatever it is that they want to do. I keep telling people, believe in what you do, first of all. Do not do something because you think Eileen is doing a talk show. Let me also do a talk show. Oh, Eileen right. did a talk show. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, mm -hmm. they get the figures all Monday, liking exactly. it, you know, and things like that. So, do you enjoy doing it? That's the question. That's the question. If mm -hmm. you don't enjoy doing it, if it's making millions for you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. When I do decor, so most people can tell me, oh, for me, it's not about the money. Because people see me like, they can see me in a field, hey, now you said the car will cook. If you say now you staff the normal you descend. But I enjoy it. You know, when, when I'm done and I see a bride walking in and I see her face, her face. the joy that that gives me, the money doesn't give it to me. Okay. That's the thing. And I'm saying this and I'm getting chills, but it, it's the reality. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it more than eating the money. Okay. Because it doesn't make any benefit to me if I get the money later and then somebody they can begin to say, man, what do you do? If I'm not even like, if I'm not even enjoying because you're thinking the money. Me, I'm thinking the outcome. Right. There are times when I end up spending my own money mm -hmm. to pull off certain events for people because I want it to look the same. Stuff thinking they vex for me. <laughs> oh, madam, do you supposed to not pay with this kind of money for all the For all the can do so. No, you but know. you do it. I, I do it. And okay. I tell them, I need to do one for this person. I they market my business. So this is how they can put on for later. Come on, find the other person. They can't say they pay that money. So do not get yourself into something that you don't enjoy doing. Okay. Just because you think. Nine days. Nine day and yeah. So, so that would be my advice. Believe in what you want to do. Enjoy what you want to do. Enjoy what you're doing. And then, of course, make money out of it. That's the icing on the cake. All right. So if somebody wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? What's your social media handle? And um, so I am on Facebook personally as Fatma Sarah Kande. Okay. I'm still carrying my new name, but then you'll see Davis. Mm -hmm. But I'm, um, of course, on, but came on, there's came on events on Facebook. We've got came on events um, on, on Instagram as well. We are also on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. And then physically, I'm at The View. <laughs> <laughs> so they can find you at The View as physically, well. Physically, I'm at The View. But we're also on social media. You know, the, there's, there's The View SL on Facebook, The View on Instagram. We've also got our website, www.theview-shl.com. Okay. I'm available on all of those spots. My number is not available here, but yeah. But you can <laughs> just go look for her at The View. She's always there. But anyway, thank you so much. I thank mean, you. I have to wrap up my show, but thank you. I appreciate you coming around. Thank you for having and, me. And, you know, um, good luck with everything. Thank you know, you. we're here to support, to really push, and then just keep shining and keep soaring higher. And, thank you. And, you know, definitely keep doing the deco beautifully so I can be proud and say, hey, I'm Miss Alon Sister Dua. <laughs> you know, I mean, I have a gift for you, of course. Uh, okay. Um, yes, this is for you. <laughs> Oh, all right. Thank you. You're so welcome. You know, I've been your host today, Ellen Key. So, till next week.